A former sergeant and a former deputy from the Lee County Sheriff's Office break their silence and explain what they say happened during an arrest that got them and another deputy fired. Thank you for joining us. I'm Lois Tomey. I'm Chris Safadi. Sheriff Carmine Marcino announced their terminations on Facebook in October, writing, quote, use of force was not properly reported and documented. Sergeant Christopher Meyer and Deputy Bradley Davidson were both fired for conduct unbecoming a law enforcement officer, untruthfulness in reports, and for lack of job knowledge and performance. On top of that, Meyer was also fired for improper use of force. Marcino claimed a criminal investigation is underway, but did not answer our questions about it. Mike News investigative reporter Celine MacArthur digs into the arrest that led to the firings and has the video that's at the center of this investigation. Look at Sheriff Carmine Marcino's Facebook post and you'll also see he shut down your ability to comment or ask questions. I wanted to learn more, but LCSO won't release the case file because there's an open criminal investigation. I also asked LCSO for an interview with the sheriff, but they have not provided me with an answer. In the meantime, I do have an exclusive copy of the internal affairs summary for former Sergeant Christopher Meyer. He says he gave it to me to back up his story about what happened to 45 year old Corey Samick during the arrest that got him fired. It's 2 a.m. August 17th. LCSO deputies Alexander Ritchie and Brad Davidson are on the scene of a traffic stop near this gas station at Kingston Drive and Palm Beach Boulevard in Tice. Sergeant Meyer drives up to check on them. I hear yelling in the background, like people yelling at each other, and I'm like, what the heck is going on? Meyer says Samick, who appears drunk, approaches them carrying an open can of the alcoholic beverage, Twisted Tea. In Deputy Ritchie's face, cursing him out, yelling at him. He's continuing to threaten to fight me. Telling us to take our vests off, telling us to take our gun belts off, and wanting to fight us in the middle of the street. Meyer asked Samick to leave. We typically try not to arrest people for very minor a county ordinance if we can help it. Um, so we're trying to get rid of this guy. Just telling him to move on, get out of here, leave us alone. Samick won't go. Meyer goes into the gas station to see if the night manager wants him removed from the property. The sergeant gets a yes to the trespass, but still can't convince Samick to leave. I go, if you don't go, you're going to jail. That's the last warning. After that, I have to do something. And he continues. I'm not leaving. What happens next is captured on the gas station's surveillance camera. Meyer tells me he went back four days later with his personal cell phone to record the 45 seconds you're about to see. A video he says he provided to LCSO and the state attorney's office. I go to grab his hand. He's facing me. I'm probably closer than you, are, you and I are right now. I mean, as close as you can get to where I can reach out and actually touch you. He yanks away. I don't know if, when he turns if he's going to swing at me or not. I punch him before he can do that. Meyer then grabs Samick and takes him to the ground. It wasn't a clean takedown because he's resisting me. So I sort of stumble, I take him down, and I fall basically on top of him. What you can't see in Meyer's zoomed-in recording is deputies Richie and Davidson standing feet away watching. Richie tells LCSO investigators he was, quote, evaluating where he could be best used to assist. Davidson says he, quote, did not see how it would make a positive effect. Do you think you did anything wrong? I could have acted a little quicker in helping Sergeant Meyer detain him. I could not have prevented any injury because I never explicitly watched any injury causing behavior. So I'm wrestling with this guy and I'm giving him orders to give me his hands. And I give him multiple strikes. I give him probably three strikes in the torso areas, he doesn't stop. Still trying to throw me off of him. So I continue, I give him a couple more, two or three. Stop again, give him another opportunity. Give me your hands. Nope, gave him a couple more. The other guys in this quick ordeal come up behind and help me dig his hands out. We put him in the car. That was the last time that we saw, or last time that I saw him. I found Samick at the gas station. He didn't want to be interviewed on camera, but talked to me about what happened. I showed him the surveillance video. Samick argues it's proof he didn't resist and claims at least another one of Meyer's punches you see him throw landed on his face. LCSO Defensive Tactics Coordinator Captain Scott Griffith deemed the level of force used by Meyer in the video, quote, appeared to be in accordance with LCSO policy and procedures. However, had Davidson and Ritchie intervened, it, quote, could have potentially prevented further injuring Mr. Samick. 
Samick also tells me and LCSO investigators the use of force didn't stop there, claiming he was struck by four deputies while handcuffed. There was not a strike, not one, where he was handcuffed and secured. But Meyer and Davidson can't prove that with the video Meyer chose to record on his personal cell phone. The IA summary shows that Samick was handcuffed at 2 a.m., but he wasn't removed from the gas station and taken to the hospital until 3 a.m. So there is one hour that's unaccounted for, and the gas station video is long gone. So the potentially incriminating or exonerating evidence is gone for good. It's better than nothing. Because if we didn't have that video, they'd be going off of strictly his word. The amount of time that is unaccounted for is simply us doing paperwork. An action Davidson admits he can't prove. He also challenges whether Samick was really hurt during his arrest. I didn't recall seeing any medical expert weigh in on the stage of those fractures and in what stage of healing. You mentioned like his level of healing. Are you saying it could have happened before you guys had encountered him? Several transients in the area that know him have reported to us on more than one occasion. He is often getting in fights. You saw him for 10 minutes before that happened. You guys kept going back and forth trying to de-escalate. Did he look like he had injuries to his face when that was happening? No. But I can't see, I don't have an x-ray machine. I don't, I can't see inside his face. The IA summary does not offer a conclusive explanation for Samick's injuries, which include fractures to his jaw and right orbital area. So I don't know, you know, I can't testify as to what maybe happened in the car. You know, if he was banging his head in the car at some point. Despite the findings and unanswered questions in the IA summary, Meyer and Davidson don't believe they should have been fired. And it was always projected at the sheriff's office that if you get into something and you get called into IA or you get called in by a supervisor, and if you tell them the truth and you tell them this is why, that they will take care of you. I asked three independent law enforcement experts to review the information and evidence we've been able to collect. Dave Benson retired as Director of Law Enforcement Training for the United States State Department in Washington, D.C. Jim Durain is a retired FBI Supervisory Special Agent, and Jeff Myers is the former Fort Myers Police Deputy Chief. They all believe Marcino's decision to fire the deputies was reasonable. And, and they may not like it, but sometimes yeah. the truth hurts. You can't behave this way and expect that everything's going to be just fine. And You have a mugshot that looks like someone's been pummeled. And there's no causal, there's no explanation for how that got there. There are many different techniques to use. They don't all use, in, involve force. The guy's hands were down the whole time. He did not make a threatening gesture. I question why the other officers did not get involved um, and just kind of stood by. Um, it, 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 it opens up a lot of questions of what actually uh, went on that evening. Coming up tomorrow on Wink News, the three law enforcement experts discuss what they say was the biggest mistake made during the use of force arrest. They also weigh in on a video of Sheriff Carmine Marcino that I got exclusively from a source where he appears to be sharing his view on use of force. I'm investigative reporter Salim MacArthur, and that is a story you will only see on Wink News.